which I have uh, provided to it, feels that this site should be sewered and feels that it can make such a recommendation to the town council. I fully will support you in that. I believe this land should be sewered. Uh, regarding uh, secondary road access, that is some uh, issue that will be resolved eventually as we go along. There is uh, an issue of lot configuration, which uh, I would like to address uh, tonight and get your feeling on it before my next appearance before you. In my uh, concept for development of this land, there is one particular uh, site for house locations which bothers me and I really don't like it. And that is the potential for two house lots depicted as number lots number one and lot number 27. Those are the lots that are closest to uh, Spurwink Avenue. Uh, new houses constructed there would be built uh, in, a, in an open field. And uh, the folks who have lived in these houses for uh, many years uh, have enjoyed and become accustomed to the open space in the field behind them. I don't like the uh, thought of uh, putting houses there although they are acceptable by ordinance. I have a, a proposal which uh, I find much more desirable, and I hope you will too. It calls for a very slight concession on the part of the planning board. Do we have that? Same number of lots, 27. Different configuration of open space. Same area as common septic. The difference in the two being basically in this area right here with the road frontage on these two lots, which will be large. These two new lots will be 28,000 and 35,000 square feet. The road frontage off of this cul-de-sac will be 50 feet per lot. That would allow this field to remain open space. It's a concept which I uh, am in strongly in favor of, and uh, we've uh, done some work to do away with the request to put houses down here. I think it's a very small concession on the part of the planning board to allow a slight uh, uh, less uh, than the required road frontage back there. I'd like your thoughts on that. How many lots are there? There. 27 on each one. Still 27. Yes. Mr. Chairman, um, I think it's too early to be giving concessions on proposed uh, developments without having seen the site, without having had an appreciation for some of the technical issues that are involved. Without having seen some of the topographical issues, there may be other lots that uh, we'll be looking for some concessions from you uh, because it may not be buildable. Uh, our engineer alludes to that uh, with severe topography, both in terms of road and drainage and building suitability of several of the lots. In terms of concessions, I think it's far too early to provide any concessions uh, on one issue, and uh, it's far too early to be really talking about whether we have a 50-foot frontage on one end of the, uh, the, the, the property or not. I think that one of the issues this board has always looked at is the imaginative use of land, and if your proposal is imaginative and it's proper, then, then the board will do whatever's uh, necessary to secure a good idea. Uh, but in terms of concessions, I think that uh, at least one member, I would hope that we we don't start uh, doing concessions uh, when we've had a half an hour discussion of a, of a development and we don't even know what the land looks like. I agree. It is, uh, it is premature to talk about, uh, talk about concessions. Indeed, as, the, as this project unfolds, the planning board may be asking the developer to make concessions, too. So, uh, but we really need a lot more information before we get into that kind of negotiation. We're, I think it's premature. Any other opinions? Well, we've taken probably more time than you may have wanted. Uh, hopefully, hopefully you got some feedback that's helpful to you as we get into this process. Um, I'm sure you're aware of our deadlines for receipt of information. Uh, 
prior to setting agendas and meetings. Uh, if not, we can make that information available to you. And we look forward to working with you on this. Thank you. I look forward to being here. Uh, I would like to uh, mention uh, two other things. One, um, I would like to, as soon as possible, get a copy of the engineer's letter. Mm -hmm. Two, uh, I can appreciate uh, Mrs. Guthrie's uh, heartfelt position, uh, which I know is non-pecuniary in nature. Uh, however, I, I, in my uh, preparation to come before this board, I'd like to say that uh, uh, there may uh, be uh, social contacts with various members of the board, and those social uh, relationships uh, exist to a greater or lesser degree. And I've always uh, felt that uh, not only with this board and its individual uh, makeup, but with all of the citizen boards of our town, that a person in an applicant status who appeared before any of uh, this board or any other board with uh, social contacts to uh, assumably of a favorable degree, but to uh, any extent, uh, as long as they were favorable, always ran the risk of a uh, sort of a uh, reverse discrimination. And uh, I uh, uh, feel that uh, members of the boards of our town would perhaps uh, bend over backwards to not only maintain the appearance of fairness, but would probably uh, give uh, that applicant a harder time than uh, would be necessary. And I uh, very uh, reluctantly uh, do not uh, see Mrs. Guthrie's presence on this board. I feel that uh, she, in uh, my case, would act objectively and would uh, uh, perhaps uh, be uh, if she were not objective, it would uh, perhaps work against me rather than for me. I may consider uh, challenging her self-removal from this board. I'll look forward to seeing you folks the next time around. Thank you, Mr. Dryden. <laughs> um, I'm going to turn the chair back over to Mrs. Guthrie. As we are uh, here for the two items that she had to say. Thank you, Ivan. Well, it certainly has been an interesting evening. And just to um, perhaps uh, set the record straight, I, I have been here five years. I, I think it's been five years. And uh, this is the first time an old friend has ever come before the planning board with a 27 slot. Uh, subdivision. So uh, depending on how long I stay, perhaps this will never happen again. But uh, on to the... We hope you stay a long time. <laughs> <laughs> on to the, uh, the draft wetlands ordinance, uh, which was addressed at a workshop last week, July 11th, by the Conservation Commission and the Planning Board. Uh, that draft, which I think was 16A, was uh, completed, turned over to our planner, Steve, who is writing a cover, cover letter concerning that ordinance, and uh, it will soon be forwarded to the ordinance committee of the uh, town council. Do you have anything to add to that, uh, That Steve? says it all. I said it all. Okay. Uh, our next workshop coming up in August, should probably address the shoreland zoning issue, Chapter 10 of the Harbor Commission report. Um, as you recall, we did not address that because we have been waiting for the state to publish its uh, new shoreland zoning. Perhaps you could fill us in on what, what has occurred with the state. Right. Uh, Rich Baker of the Department of Environmental Protection Main Department has been working on new, uh, a complete re new revision of the shoreland zoning statute, and along with that, he's been working on a mo model shoreland zoning ordinance. Um, the legislature recently made some changes to the existing statute, which kind of threw Mr. Baker's time schedule off a little bit. 
So what he's looking for is having a revised draft that will be ready for public hearing and comment uh, in September. Anyway, to make a long story short, we have a pretty good idea of what the DEP is going to be recommending, but we don't have the final version. And at least for myself, that makes me a little bit nervous. But um, the thought is that if we can at least use the materials we have now, we can at least get started and get people thinking about the uh, about some revisions to the existing zoning ordinance so that when the final versions come down from the state, we'll already be up and up and rolling and hopefully we'll be able to easily incorporate those changes into uh, any draft comments we might have. Thank you, Steve. One question I have on that is, my understanding of the state is, hasn't had its public hearings yet. Right. It's going to have hearings on a proposed ordinance in one or more places to the home. And knowing at least what I know about the administrative process, I would be astounded if something were finalized sooner than, say, six months from this fall, uh, which has you talking about a final state ordinance that's imposed upon us next winter, at the earliest, say, March or so. I'd be a little concerned if we waste some time, frankly, talking about any details at all of what we want uh, and find out that there were some substantial changes, which is always possible in the administrative process. I know a lot of people who are gunning for, for what the state has uh, Proposed. So I, I, I throw that out whether we want to spend a lot of time before yeah. it becomes final. Right. Thank you, Dan. That's a good point. Um, when we addressed the Harbor uh, Commission report, we did not address Chapter 10 just because of that. But we now uh, have a deadline, I think it's October, to report back to the Town Council on that particular chapter. So perhaps. Um, I should call the town manager tomorrow and discuss this with him um, because we do have a deadline to meet. I don't know exactly what the reasons are for the uh, October deadline. I listened to the council meeting uh, the night they addressed it, but uh, I, the words were garbled. Uh, the acoustics were poor. Only because of the system here? Yes, yes. So, uh, you know, I, I would like to tell you why, but, you know, I, I thought that October was all right, but uh, you have brought up a very interesting point, Dan, and let's see, uh, you know, what the council says about that deadline. And uh, we might be able to address that next winter. And then, of course, we have daycare. And um, I, I think we should take December off because of the numerous religious holidays during that month. Um, anyone else with any... <laughs> well, I mean, if, if we do the, uh, the, har the shoreland zoning, that's twice. I know we will probably meet uh, with the council sometime in the very near future to address once again the wetlands ordinance. Um, the daycare uh, ordinance has been looming. I'm sure that will take several months, maybe more. So uh, I, I like to keep a flexible uh, schedule for workshops because sometimes interesting things come up. I really enjoyed meeting with the Fort Williams committee. That, that was nice. So does anyone else have any other suggestions so that you can have a voice in workshops? Thank you. Marion, do you have any status on the Carvey Care Ordinance that uh, we debated many uh, for many months as a planning board and then was submitted to the council? No, I don't know uh, what has happened to that. Do you, Steve? I believe it's passed. So we expecting First Atlantic in at some point? Uh, they've uh, they were talking to public works director and town engineer a few months ago. I don't think we've heard anything from them in the past four months. We might want to take uh, one of the workshops, uh, Madam Chairman, mm -hmm. and go over that Carnegie Care Ordinance if yep. we get, in, if we get uh, an application in uh, to see if there are any changes from our right. extensive discussion uh, before we go into a review process. Are you trying to drum up business? <laughs> For us? Uh, <laughs> just kidding. But it was just so much fun that I think we should do it again. And uh, Al <coughs> Alice, you proposed a, 
another workshop. I think we've discussed dead end streets and um, yes, I, I wonder if it would be useful for us to have a workshop on, on that. Well, if we didn't discuss uh, this particular Spurwing Woods is the name of it, I certainly would be willing um, to I discuss. I mean, I think we, ha we have you a know, number of generally. allocations that have been coming before us Marco which yes. are involved in that kind of proposal and it seems to me we ought to be able we should be prepared to have sorted right. this out more or less in our, Madam our Chairman, community. I, I think that that's a wonderful idea and whether mm -hmm. we discuss Fernwick Woods or, or Highlands uh, project or any other specific subdivisions those people might be made aware that we are going to discuss it and would be presumably free to come as mm -hmm. others have come to our workshop session. I it think would, that could be very enlightening. It would be also helpful to have some public safety officials present mm -hmm. that to give us some uh, first-hand knowledge of sure. problems that could occur if we don't carefully address this issue. Excellent suggestion. Yeah. It is. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see where we go on this uh, shoreline uh, zoning, Chapter 10 of the Harbor Commission report. and. If possible, perhaps we could work that in as soon as possible, if you feel that it's a priority. Anything else tonight? <laughs> she says questioningly. <laughs> to be brought before the planning board. Yeah, you want to keep going because you sat out half the I know it. It's <laughs> <laughs> so bad right. luck for me. I just want to hear a motion to adjourn. Second. Okay, all in favor, aye. aye. Thank you uh, for tuning in to the planning board meeting. Good night. <laughs>